work ethic. Um, you know, my dad was a butcher by day, drug dealer by night, so kind of a natural hustle. Um, ball out. We ball out. Ball out. Ball out. Work ethic. Um, you know, my dad was a butcher by day, drug dealer by night, so kind of a natural hustle. Um, you know, grew up in a, with functioning drug addicts and abuse, and it kind of just forced me to be older than I was at the time, and I saw a lot at a young age and just took on a lot of responsibility. And I just think it prepared me for the roller coaster, which was my career. Um, you know, drafted in the second round, <clears throat> didn't make it, played in the D-League um, for a little bit, and then um, was called up to the NBA. Um, so I, like I said, I just think it prepared me for the ups and downs of <clears throat> professional sports, uh, life off the court, and moving forward past my career. People think when they're drafted, when they're drafted, they're good, and that's you know the furthest thing from the truth. Um, if you're not like a lottery pick, you got to still earn your spot. So I think uh, it just kind of gave me a taste of what I didn't want. Um, this is probably the second year of the D-League and it was terrible. So I was just like, this is not what I'm intended to do. Um, you know, so I ended up making the NBA. My first couple of years were kind of hit and miss. I played when I first got to the Clippers and then made a decision to go to the Kings, which I probably shouldn't have, but it was my hometown team. And then got traded to Philly with Chris Webber and sat on the bench for like two and a half years. So I was almost, you know, had a little bit of self-doubt. And fortunate enough, uh, you know, I ended up going to Golden State. Um, in 2006 and, and, and from there it kind of became a household name and really solidified myself in the league. My reality was, you know, after being drafted or actually before I got drafted, I got an Escalade figuring I was going to be in the NBA and that was the car I wanted. Um, and then when reality set in that I didn't make the team and, and had to go to the D-League, I ended up having to sell that car because obviously I couldn't afford it. So I learned that at an early age that, you know, you kind of have to kind of watch you're spending, obviously, because I came from absolutely nothing. So I was figuring, hey, I'm going to be making a couple hundred thousand. I'm going to get a car I want and, 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 and kind of live my life. But like I said, going to the D-League was, I think, a couple, a couple thousand every two weeks, maybe 4,000 a month, 5,000 a month. Like I said, it was early on, you know, so I kind of just had to adjust from that standpoint. But to me, it wasn't so much about what I was earning. It was just me knowing that I was better than the position I was in and, um, you know, really sparked a fire to, to, to prove that to the world, to be able to get to the NBA. You know, even once I started getting money and, and actually had money, I was never big on splurging. You know, I bought a house early on and fixed it up myself. And, and But I, as far as like jewelries and a bunch of cars, I was never really my taste, you know, so I never really wasted a bunch of money um, from that standpoint, but still at the same time, my first probably five years in the NBA, by the end of every summer, I was still broke. Just finally having money, and obviously, you know, when we make it, it's more than just supporting our, our immediate family. You know, yeah. I mean, you feel like you want to support everyone because you have some money now. So, um, you know, I, I got a house and had like three or four friends move in, and everyone was hanging out there, and like I said, taking care of my mom and my dad, and um, family members, so it just kind of, it goes out a lot faster than it comes in, you know, so at the end of every summer, you know, I was either asking my agent for a loan or, or, or the team for an advance, and like I said, that lasted probably like my first four or five years. It just took some growing up, obviously maturity on my part, like I said, I wasn't someone who blew money on fancy stuff, but I was still blowing money, because at the end of the day, it was gone, so... I think just understanding that, you know, this is a long game and, and, and stop being so much in the moment with stuff and, and understand that, you know, this is going to have to be kind of the, the, the financial foundation for the rest of my life. And I think what when it really kicked in was when I um, got pregnant, when my, well, my ex-wife got pregnant with our twins and understanding that, okay, now it's not just you, it's two little guys you're going to have to watch after for, you know, for, for the rest of your life, and I really kind of think that was my wake-up call to stop just being not so careless, but maybe just so giving, and learning how to say no is tough. You know, learning how to say no is tough to people, especially when you, all you've been doing is giving the first time you say no, it's just like <laughs> crazy because it's my money in the first place, but 
really learning how to say no to family, to say to, to friends and, and to opportunities that really aren't beneficial for me, um, I think was probably the first step to actually starting to save money. I think the game is so much different now because business is talked about and investing is talked about and, and saving is talked about. And when I came in the NBA in the early 2000s, it wasn't. You know, if you think, if, you know, if whoever can remember back then, it was just about cars and jewelry and, and flashing. You know what I mean? Like the older players weren't talking about business with the younger players and it wasn't really a conversation. Now it's such a huge topic of conversation and not only basketball, but professional sports at all. It's just, you know, that business off the court or off the field. And that hadn't really, that wasn't really born yet uh, when I first came in the league. So I had a financial advisor, but it didn't really do much, okay. I guess, because like I said, I was still at the, every, at, at, at the end of, you know, the first handful of summers, there was nothing in my account. Recommended um, by the guy that worked me out. He kind of, you know, there was an agent attached to him and then a financial guy that kind of came with him. So. Um, that's when I kind of started learning, you know, he would always remind me to kind of budget and, and slow down. And, you know, when I first got in the league, I was doing all my own bills and all that kind of stuff. And I kind of enjoyed it, you know, because it, it kind of really showed me what was coming in and what was coming out mm -hmm. and where I needed to make changes at. And then obviously once I started making um, better money, I hired people to kind of do that full time and then kind of took, like I said, the saving part more serious. You know, we were, I came from food stamps and, and, and check to check and um, stuff like that. So to be able to be a young 20-something with a bunch of money, um, I think I did what a handful of guys do, which is spend it. You know, that money is burning a hole in your pocket, you know, so I just did, I spent it, you know, so to, to like I said, the first, after the first handful of years, I kind of realized, okay, this is a long-term play and you kind of have to slow down and understand. So that's when I kind of started educating myself you know, handling my own bills for a, for a time and kind of understanding how much faster the money goes out than it comes in. Um, so like I said, it was just step by step and I still have to catch myself from time to time, like, do I need this or do I want this? You know, that's something I always my, ask myself when I heard Jay-Z say, don't buy something unless you could buy it twice, yeah. which made a lot of sense. You know what I mean? Like, don't buy nothing unless you could buy two of them and still be comfortable. You know, so that's when it comes to, to big purchases. That's how I kind of look at stuff now. So. I kind of just live frugally, you know? I chill, like I, I'm not flashy, like I dress up if I have to go to work. Other than that, I'm in sweats, and you know, I my life is my kids, so I've, I've done all the living and, not living, but done and seen every big party and everything you can imagine, and islands and planes and all that kind of stuff. So now it's just like, okay, let me continue to build uh, for the long game and, and have my kids, you know, set my kids up for financial stabilities for whatever they decide to do and, and, and be able to help my family and their kids and kind of that's like my passion and my fun now. Like, you know, what can I do to make more money is kind of what drives me now.